Hey guys, I wanted to show you a kit I just put together. It's a Rockmite 40 meter kit that you can buy online. I'll put the link in the, the comments here. Um, it's a pretty cool little kit. It comes as a circuit board with all the components. It's about two inches by two and a half inches. And it's, um, it's a crystal based transceiver. So it's locked to one frequency but uh, and CW only. But uh, I think I'm going to be able to have a lot of fun with it. I wanted to show you guys how I put it together into this nice little kit. Uh, shoved it all into this box with some extra stuff too. So I started this project out um, and it kind of grew and grew as a lot of projects do uh, with more and more stuff I wanted to build into this box. I started out with uh, just the 40 meter rock mite and added uh, a touch keyer. My, uh, my intent was to, to have the keyer built into this box. So that's, that's pretty much what I ended up doing. Um, why don't we open up the box and I'll show you what's inside. So I ended up using just a plastic box for this. It's probably not the ideal solution here. It's nice to have a nice uh, RF ground of a, of a metal case and also the shielding that it provides, but uh, I sacrificed a little bit for, for lightweight and just for convenience and, uh, uh, well, just ease of finding a box that, that fit the need. So here's the box opened up. So on the upper side there, uh, toward your right, is the Rockmite circuit board. That's, uh, that's the entire rock mite transceiver in the, the right hand two thirds of the box here. Left hand side, left hand one third of the box, is uh, a touch keyer. I'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the comments as well. So in addition to the touch keyer, um, I also added a couple of additional things. I wanted this to be a self-contained kit. I wanted the whole transceiver with the, the, the power supply and the keyer to all be in, in, in one kit. So I used a little 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, just a single cell there. And uh, it, I think it's a 2700 milliamp hour. Um, but the rock might needs a lot more than 3.7 volts. So I found a tiny little 12 volt step up regulator. It uh, takes in 3.7 and puts out 12 volts and the thing's tiny. They can put out just enough power to, to run uh, the rock mite and, and give it its full, full power output, which I think is uh, eh, less than half a watt. It ain't much. The last thing I included in there is this guy. It's a little USB charge controller for the battery. Now let's go ahead and close this back up. I'll show you how it works. So this purchase for me was sort of uh, an impetus for me to to start learning CW. I still don't know it very well. I'm getting better. Haven't even made a QSO with it yet, but uh, I'm getting close. Uh, I'm still working on getting my copying speed up to par, um, so I'm able to make a, a decent QSO. But uh, I figure this will be a really fun rig for summits on the air. The entire kit weighs less than six ounces. Um, that's uh, excluding the antenna, of course, but it's the transceiver and, uh, and the keyer built into the radio here. I put some controls in uh, on each end. I did not include um, all the optional controls. I know there are some mods for rock mites to include a VXO and things like that. I elected against that. Um, I just stuck with the basics. So at this end, uh, there's the 12 volt DC input, the antenna output, um, the switch there to, to switch uh, to um, uh, sort of a higher receive frequency and a lower receive frequency. It doesn't give you much latitude, but at least gives you uh, a little bit of ability to help hone in on, on the 7.030 frequency. At the other end here, the keyer controls. The potentiometer in the middle here is a speed control for the keyer, the touch keyer, and the memory button down here in the corner. You can program, I think, up to three memories in there and, and control other things on the, on the keyer, like the side tone output and things like that. You can see the little USB plug uh, to charge this, charge the battery that's in the box just by plugging that in the wall, and then of course the headphone jack output. There's no speaker on this. I thought about putting one in there, but uh, I figured it would need some additional audio ampli amplification. Didn't want to deal with that, and also didn't want to, didn't really have the space in this box. The last things on the outside of the box are an on-off switch and uh, some screws for the touch keyer portion. 
So let's put the antenna on, show how it works. It's going to be tough for you guys to hear the audio on this thing, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, maybe I'll even swap out the audio cord for the mic and, and try to give you a little sample of audio there uh, once I'm done with the demo here. So we'll, we'll flip the switch on. I'll hold the earbud near the microphone. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. And then I'll touch the, uh, well, let me listen to see if anybody's on frequency. Okay, don't hear anybody there. So let's uh, touch the, uh, the screws here. You'll see how the touch keyer works. There was, uh, there was my call sign, KJ6HOT. And uh, you see the touch keyer works pretty good. I've noticed the rock mic puts out quite a bit of audio on the side tone. Um, the, uh, the receive audio seems a little bit low, but again, I've only tried it with this little cheesy MFJ antenna. I've heard some signals coming in, but they haven't been strong. I think when I hook it up to uh, an NFED half wave, uh, it'll really make a difference on, on the receive strength. So uh, that's about it. Um, let me try to plug in uh, the audio cable and see if I can give you a little sample of audio.